it came out on Hulu recently again. Like they re it, it broadcasted on MTV and VH1 when it first came out. Uh-huh. And now you couldn't find it. And now all of a sudden it's on Hulu. So all these people are like, oh my God, I watched your season. I'm like, damn, I thought I escaped it, but I guess <laughs> not. <laughs> again i appreciate you doing this yeah for sure um i'm adam and this is about you and your journey in music and uh we'll talk about your new song as well i was just listening to it it's really cool oh thank you so much yeah i'm I'm excited to release it finally (laughs) (laughs) yeah i love the intro with like the 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 computerized like response like uh, on the telephone for sure i wanted to like make it really um kind of personal like not like you're leaving a voicemail but like I guess tie it into like the 1-800 concept of like using a phone yeah yeah yeah. I love it though it's awesome so um well first off where you were from San Francisco is that I saw born and raised baby bay area (laughs) that's awesome I lived up there for about five years I did radio I was on the radio for a long time before doing this so uh, yeah, like I loved it. I loved it up there. I, I worked for Live 105, which I think is called like Dave FM. or I don't even know what yeah. it is now. <laughs> yep, I know that radio station. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't know what they're doing over there anymore. But yeah, when I was there, it was called Live 105. And it was, oh, that's it was awesome. a lot of fun. Yeah. So did you grow up in the city? Or were you actually born and raised in the city? Or are you on the uh, East Bay, South? Not the East Bay, but I kind of like moved around the like vicinity of the city. I was like inner city, South San Francisco, San Bruno. So kind of like all those areas. Um, But I just say I'm from the actual city because trying to describe where South San Francisco is to people who haven't been there is like impossible. Oh, yeah, for sure. Or a lot of people just be like Bay Area. I'm from the Bay Area. But yeah, Yeah. if you're in San Francisco, even South, like daily city or even that i mean that's san francisco i know it's the suburbs no (laughs) (laughs) if there really is a suburb (laughs) fair fair enough that's why i guess i'm like calling it the suburb to kind of create my own (laughs) yeah because when you live in i had friends that lived like in the avenues by the park and i'm like this really still isn't the suburbs this is like you're so close to the city city but my favorite um, part is when people are like, yeah, I'm from the Bay Area. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, where? And they, they like name someplace past San Jose. And I'm like, mm, no, mm. I mean, yeah, but like, no. <laughs> like, I'm from uh, Victorville. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is Victor? No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm from Fresno. Um, <laughs> well, that's awesome. So you, you were born and raised there. What was it like growing up in the city? Did you go to middle school, elementary school, high school there? Or were you more south in the suburbs at that point? No, so I kind of like, my upbringing was kind of like crazy. So I kind of like went all over the place when it came to school. I think I went to like five elementary schools, two high schools, two junior highs. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of moving around. It is. And it's all within like the same area. So really, I just got a flavor for every school. (laughs) Sure. Did you were able to keep kind of the same friends since you're still close to everyone? I mean, if I had friends, I was kind of labeled, you know, I was like, I was like the weird kid. Like I was like the kid that eats lunch alone, but like, you know. Oh, wow. I'm I'm shocked at that, especially since what you, I mean, yeah. I mean, you've accomplished so much and um just yeah and your personality is very bubbly if that, Thank you. yeah i was shocked that that was uh, your your case but um well growing up do you come from a musical household or uh are you the only one that does music in your family no literally not a single person in my family does music like i don't think any of my family members had a musical bone in their body um so i guess you could call me the black sheep <laughs> okay well um, how did you get into music then Oh God, it's such a wild story. I am. So I'd been writing poetry all my life. Like since I was a kid, it was like a way for me to get my feelings out. Um, and I was seeing an, I was not seeing, I was dating an Australian. Um, we dated for almost two years, but we were doing long distance from the different countries. Mm -hmm. 
So I ended up going to Australia for six months. And while I was there, he was a musician. So that was my first introduction to like proper music, like, oh, somebody who does music, like learning about it. Um, and we went out for karaoke one night. Uh, I got, you know, a little bit so upset. <laughs> and I ended up singing karaoke, which is something I would have never done. Mm-hmm. And the next day it was kind of like, why aren't you singing? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know. That's like not my lane. Like I'm really embarrassed about it. Like that was the first time I actually had ever sang in front of anyone. Wow. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, my shower, but like, that's my own audience. That's not like singing (laughs) for people. Right. Um, Right. So I ended up seeing his vocal coach who he had worked with since he was a kid. And the first two sessions, I couldn't, couldn't sing in front of her. I had like a full blown panic attack. Like I couldn't even do the vocal warm up. It was very embarrassing. Um, third session, she finally got me to sing. And I did like a uh, Amy Winehouse, I think it was like back to black. Mm-hmm. And I was leaving the following week to go back to America. So I didn't get a lot of time with her. And she made me promise that I would just try it, just test it out. I was like, I don't, I can't even sing in front of you. Like what makes you think that I'll be able to do that in front of anybody? Mm-hmm. So she gave me a list of vocal coaches in America. I called all of them. Nobody responded back to me except for one person. And I ended up uh, doing a couple lessons with him. And it basically was the same exact situation. I was just so anxious. I couldn't do it. I broke down crying. Um, it's singing's just really, really, I guess, vulnerable for me from yeah. like my childhood. And um, did the lessons. And it just kind of like, I, because it happened so fast, everything just like fell into place so rapidly. I can't even explain like how I got here. And why I feel like it's a purpose, it's a calling, Mm -hmm. because it's just, it makes no sense. Like, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you're good. Go. No, (laughs) I I was just going to say that um, the voice is, it's just such a vulnerable thing. Like you said, I mean, you could get on a guitar and suck and you're, who cares? Like people just pick it up and just, you know, slam on it for a minute or any other instrument, really. It's not because it's your own voice i mean something you can really change right so if somebody's like oh you're awful then it's like ouch like that's not something i can it's not as easy to work on that as it would be to oh yeah i suck a guitar well let me play for six months and see where i'm at yeah i had i i had slash have a lot of like trauma attached to singing and music so i right for me when I would sing and when that they kind of like cracked open that part of me, it caused me to like feel things that I hadn't uh, faced yet. Okay. So when you were growing up, like you, yeah, you, I don't, I don't know if you want to get into it, but like, no, no, I don't care. I'm an open book. We are. Okay. Um, Yeah. No. So in my household, my mom was like very, very strict, very, very religious. And I wasn't allowed to sing in the house. Oh, wow. I was only allowed, no, not at all. I was only allowed to listen to music that she wanted. So I, it was jazz and Motown, jazz, Motown, soul. That was it. So any other outside influences that I listened to, there was a couple that I was allowed to listen to, like Britney Spears, blah, blah, blah. But anything else, I remember I had a CD player And I had all these CDs in like a CD case and I Uh hid it under my bed and she found it and she broke all the CDs. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, very, very strict household. Oh, wow. So you couldn't even, what if you were singing along to the Motown? She didn't even want to hear that. No, I don't think my mom ever heard me sing. Not once, not once. And I was in her household for 17 years. Wow. Are they supportive of you? Is she supportive of you now or no? No, I actually don't talk to my mom. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, no. You're going there? No, 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 no. Listen, <laughs> I'm an artist, right? Like I, I'm an open book because okay. I think it's important to be that way. If I'm gonna, 
I mean, how am I going to connect with people if I'm not open? Like, you're not an artist, then you're a puppet, right? Sure. No, I, I respect that. And, and I'm wow, I'm, that's huge for you to be so vulnerable. I mean, you said you were there till you're 17. At 17, did you just move out of the house? No, she kicked me out with um, like a suitcase and I had to kind of like figure it out. I actually ended up not graduating from high school. So oh my, gosh. Um, my education stopped kind of early, which is fine because I think you can learn a lot from watching documentaries and reading books. To be honest, I feel like I'm okay right. with not graduating. Um, yeah, no. And that's funny because nowadays it's like I have uh, young kids and it's like, what are they going to even be learning? Like the robots and AI is going to do everything. From literally. <laughs> they have like, apps now that'll do your math homework for you. I'm like, yeah. I didn't have that. That sounds lit. Like, yeah, right. It's a joke. It's like <laughs> having life skills in what you went through and just being able to you know, be present in, in, in every life situation is such a yeah. bigger thing to have than no is some math problem that you'll never care to use or remember. For sure. Like in a, a giant equation where you're like, well, I'm not going to be a rocket scientist. <laughs> right. You're not going to go to the grocery store and then start calculating eggs, you know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Just need basic addition and some, maybe some uh, multiplication at one point. Uh, but, Literally. Yeah, really such a joke. <laughs> Um, yeah, he, like my kids are learning things. I'm like, you realize like a robot will be able to just do all of this within like yeah. the next five years. Uh, anyway, um, okay, so at 17, you well, then what do you do? Are you just trying to like couch surf or get a job? Literally, or? I was literally I was like surfing couches. Um, I was basically homeless. Like I didn't have like a proper roof over my head. I stayed with my dad for three months, but like wasn't close to him and then after three months it kind of like didn't happen um and yeah I ended that's, up that'd be scary I mean about 17 that's so young I think it is young um I think because I kind of always had to step in and take care of myself growing up there was a level of maturity that I had in that sense mm -hmm. I think the scary thing is not you know because you grow up thinking that if you don't graduate or like go to college and all this stuff that you're going to be a failure. Mm -hmm. So knowing that that wasn't going to happen for me, because right now I had to think about like the necessities of like, where are you going to sleep? Mm -hmm. It was like overwhelming, you know? Yeah. I can't even imagine. Cause yeah, you, I, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm older than you, but I know for my generation, it was like, you go to school and then you go to college. And then when you graduate, you're going to get this great job. Uh, but when I graduated college, it was 2007. So like the recession was just about to crash. And then it was like, what was fire? Going to school? <laughs> That's so fire. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, this is a waste. But um, yeah, it's, I, yeah, that's. That's wild. So what do you do? Do you just stay in San Francisco? And had you started, like, did you meet this Australian at this point? Like what year are you going oh, there? God, this is no. way later. So I actually, this is going to be so funny. The first time I ever sang in front of anyone was the end of the year of 2018. Wow. Yeah. So you haven't been doing this very long. Your voice is incredible. I'm shocked. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. My shower was always a really good coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sounds like it. Always a wow. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> always a standing ovation. I love that. Wow. That's crazy. So it's eight, 2018. So not very long at all. No, not very long. And things started to like kind of move right when the pandemic hit, you oh, know? Um, sure. But I kind of spent the entire pandemic just like putting my head down and working, doing Zoom sessions, like sync stuff. I I wanted to exit the pandemic knowing who I was, what artist I wanted to be, and I guess like honing my skills a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I didn't I'm not gonna lie I definitely ate a lot of ice cream the first two months and you know had a lot of crying sessions sure. but after that I was like you know what I'm done with this I'm gonna focus <laughs> <laughs> oh wow that's really incredible that's so impressive um real quick just because I saw this online and I don't know if you want to talk about it but you were on America's Next Top Model was that like a big thing like was oh. modeling a big thing for you like before yeah. all of this 
So and you don't have to talk about it if you don't want. Oh, I mean, I was no, just I'm good. It came out on Hulu recently again. Like they re it, it broadcasted on MTV and VH1 when it first came out. Uh-huh. And now you couldn't find it. And now all of a sudden it's on Hulu. So all these people are like, oh my God, I watched your season. I'm like, damn, I thought I escaped it, but I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> you really have to do some digging. It doesn't just right come up that you were on the show. Maybe if I just. Thank God. Was, yeah. <laughs> Well, not, um, I guess I didn't have to do too much digging, but like, I was like, oh, okay. And then I went to it and I'm like, oh, she was on this. Okay. I was on the show. Yes, I was. Um, it just blacks out. <laughs> um, yeah. So modeling for me was actually something that I did for almost nine years. So like, you know, with all the stuff that happened when I was 17, um, around, was it 18, 19? I got scouted at a mall folding jeans by like a local agency in San Francisco. And interesting. yeah, it was really weird. Cause um, usually I would assume that'd be some sketch situation. Like, Oh, Hey, you should be a model. Yeah, no, it wasn't. <laughs> it was it was real. It was definitely real. Right. Um, and I kind of modeled for nine years, eight years, wow. no, not nine. I, I modeled for a, a while. Okay. I was modeling for a while. And then I was actually about to quit modeling. I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll like go to school or do something with my life. I was having an existential crisis Uh um, because of my height. Nobody would sign me to like a bigger agency. I moved to LA and it was like, God, the things that I've been told, get a nose job, wax your eyebrows, straighten your hair. Your hair's too curly. You're too short. One agency told me to get leg extension surgery, and I actually almost considered it. And then what now the hell looking is back, that? looking back, I'm like, "Yo, I would have looked like a fucking grasshopper, bro." That's such a. Like, I've never even heard of that. I need to like look up some Google images of that later. But what? Don't what do they do? Just like Google images. But yeah, no. What do they just shave your? I mean, just saw your shave shit it? off. Yeah, they shave like, your legs. No. <laughs> just stick some what (laughs) yeah it's wild um and so I was about to quit and then I got a dm one day from somebody who was like hey blah 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 I'm a casting agent from you know vh1 you should try out for this thing and I thought it was a joke I was like ain't no way this real this person has like a hundred followers like good luck bye Um, (laughs) and they kept messaging me and so finally I was like, okay, let me, um, let me just see what's going on. Turns out it was real. <laughs> um, and they kind of expedited me through the whole audition process. And we filmed for two months. So I was there filming for two full months. And oh, I got wow. it in fourth place. Yeah, I saw that. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny that you said you got a DM and that person like had no followers or anything. I I forgot who I interviewed. I've, been, I've interviewed a lot of people that have been on like American Idol or uh, The Voice or whatever, and they had a similar situation where it was like the person didn't even have like a profile picture. It was like some oh, like bro. sketchy looking account, and it was I'm like, like, what scam is this? <laughs> yeah, like, I'm a producer for the show, and it's like, are you like? I... Yeah. Right. And that they were, and they got through, you know, similar to what you said, where it was like they went right to kind of the judges thing. But That's it's just, wild. it's so wild to think like, yeah, maybe it's because they wouldn't want to put that on the profile because people would just be hounding them. I, but I don't know. It seems a little weird. That or they don't want that. It might be like a side gig and they don't want it attached to like their actual name. Ah, oh, that's a good point. You know, like Billy Bob, who lives in Tennessee and has a family. That he's like, I don't want people to know that I'm actually a casting director for American Idol. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, that well, that <laughs> that could be definitely okay. Well, wow. So I would imagine getting the modeling gig, or you said you're folding jeans in the mall, and then you get signed to this agency. Did that change? I mean, financially for you, were you able to then be like, okay, I'm just going to do this? I didn't need yes. to go to college and, you know, all this other stuff, but like, were you able to, I mean, going from 17 and trying to figure out where you're going to live to having this kind of moment happen for you, was that, that must have been exciting in a sense that maybe you didn't have to do the mall job or 
for for sure i still the thing with modeling is that um it's really good money when it's good money but Mm. it's like so fluctuating that you still need to have some form of a cushion you Uh know and unless you have like parents that financially fully support you um so i had a job on top of doing that and then when i got to la and things kind of started like moving a little bit more because there's more down here Mm -hmm. i was doing like makeup campaigns where like yeah i would i would be decently okay that's good though i mean that just even having the that kind of extra you know boost of income or whatever just because of the situation you were kind of thrown into right yeah i mean you have no one to really lean on and it's like yeah go figure it out you're 17 it's like uh yeah. what <laughs> no blood related family to lean on that's for sure but like you know you always have like your chosen family sure sure so years later i mean were you doing after america stop model were you still pursuing modeling or at what point do you like kind of stop or maybe you're even still doing i don't know I was trying. I was trying to still pursue it. Um, When I actually went to Australia for those six months, I was signed to an agency out there, but I couldn't get a visa. It was becoming an issue. So it, I was like being paid under the table, which they were scared because that's kind of illegal. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Oops. But that's when like the whole like karaoke thing happened. So it's like, I feel like I've lived like 20 lives in one, honestly, because it's like, you know, I, it doesn't make any sense. I don't understand. I'm like, who's writing my story? Because this shit's is <laughs> wild. What kind of Hollywood script is this? Right. Because you go there and then that's when the karaoke thing happens and you get back to the States and it's like, <laughs> I should do this music thing. Yeah. And what's really crazy is that, um, how it started moving more is I got a, again, a random DM from someone um, who was like, Hey, have you ever like performed before? And I was like, I'm going to be honest. uh, No. And they were like, Oh, I'm a booking agent from a hotel cafe. Would you play a show? And I was like, sure. I thought it was going to be like a small, like one song thing. They booked me for a 45 minute set headline with zero music I had zero music so it was all covers but I ended up you know walking away with like 300 bucks that night which is unheard of especially for your first show so they kept asking me to come back wow so how did you didn't have any music out or you had music out and that's why the person I had to you I had no music out none how did they know you're a singer like cover Um, videos or something you had up I had, so I had one cover that I put up for shits and giggles. It was a jazz rendition of Hurt by Nine Inch Nails. Oh, cool. But like, I'm, I had nothing. Like, there was no videos of me singing. It just, it doesn't make sense, bro. I'm telling you, I don't understand. So the, this, you had one video up and the person DM'd you and says, hey, I book for the Hotel Cafe. You want to play a show? Yup. Yep. So I've held like a, a nice relationship with them um i think yeah they're a solid venue i mean a lot of people are there yeah they are um and as i got further into music i learned that i was like damn this is like kind of iconic (laughs) no it really is that's amazing (laughs) so that was your first show ever was playing there and it was all you just did all covers yep all covers i was like i i remember i was so nervous and shaky on stage And I was like, yeah, guys, like, I don't actually have any original music. So you're going to just get a bunch of like jazz covers. (laughs) How did you do it? Were you, was it just you with the backing tracks or did you hire a band? Like how how did you perform? So that vocal coach that I got hooked up with, um, back in LA, he helped me find a guitarist. Okay. So it, it was like a whole process of me learning like, oh, this is what you need to do to like have a show. Got it. Okay. So you ended up having then live musicians with you or at least a guitarist. Okay. Yeah. It was hotel cafe. So it was stripped back. It was like a keyboardist and a guitarist. But still, that's cool. That must've been cool to play with other people maybe for the first time. Mm -hmm. Were you nervous about singing in front of them or were you kind of at that point 
through the the no no i I had full-blown panic attack which you couldn't see i hide it really well when i'm on stage but because there is like trauma attached to like my voice for me Mm -hmm. i internally freak out but you'll never know unless i say something or you see my hand and it's like la 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 la, you know (laughs) okay yeah (laughs) Wow. Well, after that performance, when do you start writing your own songs? You said you did po- or wrote poetry for a really long time, but yeah, when so, does it become a, a, your first song? Or So I actually did not know, this is so dumb, but I guess like when you don't work in music, you don't know that poetry is basically song lyrics. Um, right. I mean, so, yeah, you wouldn't know that. Right? <laughs> yeah. So... How I started writing my own music was shortly after um, coming back and like kind of having movement with like a show and everything in uh, LA. Um, My ex, my Australian ex, he came down for three months and he broke up with me a week before he left. And it kind of triggered me and spiraled me um just the way that everything happened he like broke up with me and left the house and I all the stuff that I hadn't dealt with as a kid I think just came up because it was like so abrupt and it really hit me because he had been at my house for three months and you know I flew him down there and found out that he had been seeing someone for a couple months um, back in Australia. And I ended up kind of having a suicide attempt. Oh my gosh. And then um, a week later, I checked myself into like residential treatment um, and spent about two months in there going to therapy and just writing a bunch of poetry. And I remember they had us make a list of what do you want to accomplish when you leave here? And I was like, I want to try music. So I started writing and structuring poems like in treatment and ended up leaving there with a whole new sense of reality and new sense of self and a new goal in mind to kind of push myself in that direction. So that's really where I started the whole journey of songwriting was that. And then shortly after that, I did a 10 day music intensive where they teach you like music business, songwriting, things like that. And just kind of like happened. The ball started rolling, got a manager. She put me in sessions. It was really quick. (laughs) Wow. I'm sorry to hear that. That's. Oh, no, it's good. But, well, yeah, I mean, I guess the positive is you got those poems written and did those become some of your first songs? Like Save Me is the, from what I'm, I'm just going off your Spotify. Uh, That one was, looks like it was one of the first ones you put out. No, I had a song called Better Now, which was actually about uh, that, all of that. Um, I took it down though, because I wasn't, I'm like, this doesn't sound like me anymore, you know? Okay. I want to just like put that in the past. I also want to take Save Myself down, but you know. Um, I like that. I thought that was a cool song. I listened really? to your, oh. yeah, your, your stuff. Thank you. Um, um, okay, so you had one on prior. And what year did you, did you put that out fairly quickly after getting, you know, going through the treatment center or no? No, my first song that I actually released was in January of 2020. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Good timing, yep. right? Good timing. <laughs> um, Amazing okay. timing. It really was so nice. <laughs> to have and to have such a vulnerable song. You said it, you talk about all of the things that you went through. Was that, uh, I mean, tell me about that. That must have been scary in itself. Not um, only is it your first song, but then the subject matter being so vulnerable. Yeah, it definitely was. I think. One, I was really proud of myself for making it. Mm -hmm. Two, I kind of just was ready to talk about it. So it wasn't scary, but it did feel vulnerable. Yeah, I bet. I mean, wow. Yeah. Okay. And were you 
was it something you were concerned about the response on or just you're like i don't give a shit i'm gonna put it out this is my stuff and my song and my story no because when i did america's next top model i kind of grew a following and people would send me messages holy crap there's a spider oh no bye sorry dude um (laughs) sorry there was a spider and i was like uh (laughs) oh i'm good (laughs) people would send me messages like of what they were going through so it kind of like pushed me to be like okay if i write this it's gonna help people people are gonna hear it they're gonna relate it's gonna like do something good so Mm -hmm. yeah when you were on America's Next Top Model, did you disclose some of this stuff that you had went through or no? The um, people are just reaching out in general saying, oh, hey, like this is going on with me. I did in the first or second episode a little bit, okay. but um, because of the bullying that happened in the house, I just oh, gosh. really, I know it was great. It was so reality TV. Um, because did of the air bull- this stuff, like, oh, 100%. It- that you oh, can okay. go to I've YouTube and it. look up some clips. It's really oh. not great. <laughs> oh man, that's awful. It's yeah, it's fine. Um, but sorry, um, <laughs> sir, please get down. Thank you. Um, wait, what was I saying? I have ADHD. <laughs> oh no, so do I. It's all good. Um. Oh, I asked you. You said that there was bullying in the house, and I asked if you, they aired that stuff. But you said that you kind of disclosed some of the stuff that happened to you. Oh yeah, a while little on the bit. show, and then yeah, a little bit, and then people were reaching out to you. For sure, after it the just fact. okay. The show in general, like the house, didn't feel like a safe enough space for me to really dive into it. Got so it. I kind of kept most of it to myself, other than one episode. Okay. And I mean, it's national TV and people are, you know, I mean, I can totally understand why you wouldn't do that. For Um, sure. So you, but that's amazing that you, you know, you could put the song out and just knowing that other people had already been reaching out to you. Yeah. Had similar stories. Exactly. And I think um, from the beginning, I've kind of been like, if I'm going to do music, if I'm going to be an artist, like I have to be real, I have to be vulnerable. Because otherwise, why am I doing music? I might as well just be like a cover singer. If I'm Mm. not going to put my energy into it and try to connect with people, then what's the point? Yeah, there's something to that. I feel like that's why like TikTok became such a big app and like people songs were doing well on there because it's you can see that it's something authentic about it. Right. It's not just like you're going into a studio, putting together some pop song and putting it out and hoping that people care about it but you're actually seeing the person being vulnerable and being authentic about what they're doing and then exactly that attracts the attention of other people 100%. exactly okay so once you put the song out in 2020 you said 2020 was when you put it put it out in january and then are things kind of moving at that point like okay i got the song out like yeah i had a show booked with a hotel cafe everything was happening and then boom pandemic oh man okay so how does yeah. that i mean obviously it affects everybody you said you were able to kind of a couple months in start just writing and writing um i was that must have sorry, sorry go ahead. Ahead. i was just gonna say you must have been <laughs> defeated right i mean like everyone else but to have you're finally at the stuff's out you're you're pursuing music okay this is gonna be it and then to have your you know the carpet ripped out from under you oh for sure into it for sure. I thought like everything was over. I'm like, I started too late. Like, I don't, I haven't been doing music since I was a kid. Like, this is horrible. I don't know what to do. Um, gave myself like two, three months to feel my feels. And then I was like, you know what? Zoom sessions. Um, I w- I'm going to make songs in the studio with people that I feel safe with because of COVID. Mm-hmm. I, I, just kind of put my head down and worked and like worked on that whole EP fever dream, like did, Mm -hmm. did so much. Throughout that. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, to put a whole EP out that came out with the following year. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was a couple months prior that I was like tracking it and everything. Wow. Yeah. What was it like to, to have a full project done and to release that? 
it felt so nice. I was like, oh my God, wow, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> and were you able, you're probably able to perform at that point, right? Because it had stuff had opened up a little bit once the EP finally came out. A little bit. I think in total, I've only performed um, about, hi, <laughs> I've only performed like uh, five times since then. Because okay. I've really just been focusing on gathering a catalog, writing mm -hmm. for other people, writing for sync, just doing God's work and building a catalog. <laughs> sure. Wow. So you've been writing for sync as well. Mm hmm. How is that? That's probably a different approach. Or do you have oh, songs sure. that you're like, do you have this, like, how, how does that work? Do you pitch a song to them or do you have like, do they go, hey, can you write for this scene or um, how um, has that been working for you? Just building relationships with people, I think is how I got kind of into that. Mm -hmm. Having a good session for yourself. And then the person's like, oh, we should do a sync session. And then you just kind of like build your little network. The sun is in my eyes. There we go. <laughs> um oh we're good <laughs> all right go on. um but yeah just getting pulled in and like you know cheesy cat commercial jingles they they're great <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> um so well tell me about this new one so you have this new song it's not out yet but i've heard it. it's really really good we we're talking a little bit about it earlier when you heard it broke my heart yeah talk to me about this song a little bit well so 1-800 broke my heart um I was dating a guy last year and he ended up cheating on me with his co-worker um dating her for a couple months behind my back not and the same guy not the Australian no not the same oh my guy. gosh yeah that's some bad luck yeah right I'm like one after the <laughs> other honey <you> know? <laughs> hey but you know what it makes for damn good lyrical content i was gonna say you got some you got a great song out of it at least the, i don't know about the australian but this one you did it it's like. really yeah it's really it's it sucks but at the same time i'm like oh i'll just write a song about it um <laughs> uh but yeah so he cheated on me with his coworker. blah 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 gave me no closure none at all they started dating two days after he broke up with me like full on and I had no closure, like no communication, no nothing. So I was like, okay, I need to say what I want to say to him and give my side of the story, even though I can't and put it into a song. Like if I can't say it to you, then I'm going to say it to other people in a song that they can blast in the car and put their middle fingers up to. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so I named the song 1-800 Broke My Heart. And that's actually a play on words because he was a producer. It's a play on words to his producer name, which I will not fully give out. But I will say that the first one, two, 1 800, blah, 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 is his producer tag. So it kind of like worked out. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to do some deep dive research, you could probably figure it out. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Shit. Oh, that's funny. Okay, well, uh, yeah, the, I love the song. I think it's awesome. And is Thank it going to be, yeah, so it's coming out. So it'll probably be out by the time we release this. And is there like going to be a, a video for it? And also, is it going to be a part of a bigger project? Yeah, I have a whole plan. Um, I'm going to shoot a video for it probably end of February. And then it's, I've been stacking music. So I'm going to release another EP like further into the year. And just like roll out some singles and then boom, big old project, not an album. I'm not ready to do that yet, okay. but an EP. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited because it's, it's a new body of work that feels like sonically more me. Mm -hmm. I, I've like fully found my sound now and I don't, I have no question about it. That's huge. That's yeah. huge. <laughs> yeah, I know it takes a, a while. Well, if you listen to any artist from their first album to whatever they're doing now, it's like it's, they evolve or they don't stick around, I guess. <laughs> We're like basically <laughs> Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, well, I, again, I love what you're doing. I appreciate you taking time to, to chat with me today. Thank you yeah. so much for doing this. And thank Thanks you for being for, so vulnerable like that. For sure. wow, it means a lot. Thank um, you for, 
you know, listening to my story and uh, allowing me to be vulnerable and be like my quirky self. So <laughs> well, I think you're great. And uh, again, I appreciate your time. I have one more quick question. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. 100%. This is advice that somebody gave me and it sat in my brain ever since. Closed mouths don't get fed. If you don't put yourself out there, if you don't say what you truly want to say, if you don't approach that person at the event, if you don't, you know, push down your shyness to walk up to somebody that could change your life, you, you're you not, it's just not going to happen. You have to put yourself out there because closed mouths don't get fed. Bring it back, bro.